Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up displacement inside of Cinema 4D and Octane. All right, let's get started. I have a really basic scene here, and I added a sphere. It's just an ordinary sphere, and the only thing I did was crank up the segments. Because we're gonna displace geometry, you wanna make sure you have some geometry to displace. So crank up your sphere segments, and then go into your sphere type and set it to hexahedron. This is gonna give us some more even geometry as we start to displace this object. All right, the next thing we need to do is set up an octane material that has displacement turned on inside of it. So let's open up our materials tab and let's go to our materials inside of the live viewer, the octane live viewer. Go to create, go to octane glossy material and just drag this onto your sphere. Once you do that, Go ahead and double click on your sphere. It's gonna open up down here in the attributes. Let's go into diffuse first, click on the color and just make this a darker gray. This will help us see the displacement as we start to displace this object. All right, next thing we need to do is add the displacement itself. To do this, double click on your material, go to your basic tab, click on the node editor. Now, if you haven't used nodes before, don't worry, we're not gonna dive too deep into this, but we do need a couple basic things go ahead into the search bar and search for displacement. I'm just typing D-I-S and here's the displacement and just drag it out and now you have your displacement here. The other thing you're gonna need is some noise. So let's go ahead and search for noise and octane noise should be fine. Now we're gonna use the max on noise in this example since everyone has access to it so everyone can follow along. But if you have a specific displacement texture you're trying to use on your object, you can come up here and type an image into the search and pull out an image texture node. It's gonna then ask you what you want to displace. I have some stuff on my desktop here. I'm just gonna grab one of these and it will set this up and then you'll wanna use this instead of the noise to plug into your displacement if you're following along. All right, now that we have this, by the way, I'm using one and two on my keyboard to zoom in and out and move around in this uh, view. Once we have noise, we need to hook all of this up. So drag your noise into the texture button here on your displacement and then take this displacement button and drag, click and drag it into the dis displacement area on your material. All right, once you do that, there's only one more thing you need to do. Go into your displacement node by highlighting it and clicking on it. And up here under type, you wanna set this from texture displacement to vertex displacement. And this is going to essentially turn on the correct mode for displacement. Now, we don't need this much displacement, so let's just turn our height down to two and let's look at the noise pattern that we have here. So first of all, we are moving geometry here in Octane. And if you don't have enough geometry, well, there's also a little cheat for this as well. So on your sphere, you can go into your tags, go to C4D Octane tags, click on the Octane object tag and add it to your scene. With it selected, come down to your attributes and grab your subdivision group and turn up your subdivision level, one, two, even three, and you can keep going and get more detail on your object to displace. Now, this will slow down your render, and uh, essentially it's calculating all this geometry. So I'm gonna keep it at three for now, just for the tutorial, but you could always crank it up for your final render. So what other things can we do here to adjust our displacement? Well, we can adjust the noise so instead of the Perlin noise, we could try a turbulence noise and already we're getting a lot more detail. Let's go into our displacement and also talk about the mid-level. Right now the mid-level is set to zero, which means all the displacement is happening from the layer of the sphere outwards. And if you want it to be a little bit more in the middle, you wanna set your mid-level to 0.5. This means that it's extruding just as much inside the sphere as it is outside the sphere. And this is gonna help keep a similar shape to your original sphere. So again, this is too much. I'm just gonna knock it down to one centimeter. And this is looking pretty good. Just to be a little bit more visually beautiful, I'm going to double click on this material, go into our specular, our and our roughness actually, and turn up the float. 
this is gonna help see more of the detail of our displacement. And hey, for one more thing, we could just crank up our subdivision level and get even more detail right here on our object. All right, earlier I said I was gonna show you a more detailed version of this effect. So for this, I'm gonna turn off my sphere and I'm gonna turn on my Monster Man. Under my layers, I'm just gonna turn off sphere and turn on Mr. Monster. Once it's all loaded up and rendering, you're gonna to start to see our brand new clay materials on this character right here. Now, all of our clay materials are ready to go with displacement. You don't have to set up those nodes. They are literally drag and drop and you get these effects right inside of Octane. So you can see here with this character, we have all this nice detail. And if I zoom in, you're gonna see all of this awesome detail on our character being displaced by the displacement maps that are built in all of these tactile materials. And just like the earlier example, you could add an octane tag right to your object and turn up and down the subdivision level to get more or less detail as your render needs it. So you can see if we crank this down and we hit render, you're gonna see a softer version of the displacement. Now this might be fine and this will render faster, but if you need more detail, just turn up your subdivision group. I'm gonna crank this to three. You're gonna to start to see all the beautiful detail on this character and it's literally drag and drop onto your object and you're ready to go. So let me click on this other camera just to zoom out and see this muscle dude in all of his glory. Now all of these clay materials and all of our tactile materials were created by capturing materials at their highest quality so that you can drag and drop them onto your object and you just get stuff that looks like this. So for example, we have one of our rough clay materials here, but we also have these clay dough materials. Let's grab an orange one, of course, and drop it on Monster Man. Hit render and you'll see right away, we get a beautiful result. All of the displacement is built into the material and all of these new materials here in the tactile collection were created to allow you to just drag and drop and see the result right away, especially in Octane where the displacement just works uh, just by adding it to your scene. Now there's of course a ton of these clay dough materials in different colors, but we also have a collection of fine and rough and sculpting clay that give you totally different results. So for example, the first one we showed you was the rough one, but if you go to the sculpting clay, let me go to the octane collection and just drag one of these onto the other material, it's going to replace it. And then of course, all we have to do is click render and it's gonna show you a completely different material. And this one's got more of a waxy feel, a softer clay. And there's literally hundreds of these variations with different tools and sculptures. And we even have tutorials that show you how to set up things like stop motion animation. And this is just the first part of the collection for tactile. So stay tuned here at Grayscale Gorilla. And if you're a Plus member, all of this stuff is in your account right now to download and start to play play with right away. Also wanted to thank you for watching and I hope you picked up a tip that you use in your next render for displacement. And if you're new to Grayscale Gorilla, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel here. We have a ton of videos, tools, plugins, all designed to help you make more beautiful renders inside of Cinema 4D. And with that, wanted to thank you one more time for watching and we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.